With the launch of Destiny 2 Beyond Light, our Guardians were introduced to our first Darkness subclasses. In today's video, I will be covering the Hunter's new Dark subclass, the Revenant. We will be breaking down each part of the subclass, and afterwards, we will be talking about some of the best setups you can make and how to optimize your subclass. Then we will finish off the video with some tricks and tips for being an absolute monster in PvP. Do keep in mind that this is the first installment of the subclass breakdown, and as the season progresses, I will be making additional videos detailing additional fragments and aspects once they are released. This also includes exotic synergy and PvP builds, so if you're interested in that, feel free to subscribe. But before we get into the Hunter Stasis subclass video, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by watching the entire video and sharing it with your friends. Both are free ways to support the channel. And don't forget to click that like button. And without further delay, let's get into the video. Like all Hunter subclasses, you're given an option between Marksman Dodge and Gambler's Dodge. Normally, I would suggest to run Gambler's Dodge for the further dodge animation, which can assist in avoiding enemy attacks, and if used near an enemy, it will fully recharge your melee ability. Personally, I feel like Gambler's Dodge is the more superior dodge. It will help you with some of your abilities. Again, dodging near an enemy will recharge your melee ability. The other dodge is going to be Marksman Dodge. While this dodge doesn't provide the same ability to avoid enemy attacks or a fully charged melee, this dodge does reload your current weapon. Now, you're probably wondering when I would suggest for a player to use Marksman Dodge. Well, with the changes to high impact hand cannons, which now puts them on the map in the current meta, those weapons suffer from poor reload and low handling. So this dodge could assist you in giving you the ability to stay in the fight by reloading your weapons. This dodge also helps with any weapon with kill clip, since dodging after a kill will activate the perk. Now, moving on into the jump, I won't spend too much time in this section. For my PC players, if you're looking to get the most out of your movement, I can only suggest Strafe Jump. This jump provides strong directional control. As for my console players, you can either use Strafe or Triple Jump. I've seen mixed reviews on console for both jumps, but with the new platforms being able to have a FOV slider and a higher frame rate, you might want to consider Strafe Jump. To close out this section, Hunters really thrive in the Crucible by outplaying their opponents with their movement. And if you're still looking to take a deep dive into hunter movement, a few weeks ago I made an advanced hunter movement guide, which you can find at the top of the screen now and down below in the description. Now with the basics out of the way, let's get into the fun part of the video. The hunter's melee is called Withering Blade, which reads, toss a stasis shuriken at targets to damage and slow them, provides multiple charges. Now to me, this melee feels like a cross between a solar throwing knife melee and a void smoke bomb melee. Kind of the best of both worlds if you ask me. Well, let's break down this melee before we get into any tips and tricks. For starters, this melee ability is a two charge rather than your usual one charge, meaning you can hold two stasis shurikens at once. But keep in mind that when you initially spawn into the game, you only have one charge active at once and you will need to build your second charge over time. But as we mentioned in a previous segment, by running Gambler's Dodge, if you dodge near an enemy, you will fully charge your melee ability. Keep in mind that Gambler's Dodge will only refresh one charge at a time. When you use your melee ability at an enemy in PvP, one charge will slow them down and a second will freeze them. Does it matter where you land your shuriken? For slowing purposes, no. But for damage purposes, yes. Landing a critical shot with a shuriken will deal 91 critical damage, and landing a body shot with a shuriken will do 61 damage. For slowing purposes, merely landing shurikens anywhere on your enemy will slow them down. Another thing to keep in mind is that your shuriken can ricochet off walls and enemies. By doing so, your shuriken can slow multiple enemies and landing two back-to-back -back shurikens can freeze any enemies affected by it. Shurikens can be some of the best offensive and defensive tools at your disposal. So let's get into some of the tips and tricks with your new stasis melee ability. For starters, if you're a sniper, your biggest fear is having a shotgun ape running at you, but not anymore. Using your shuriken can slow your enemy down, allowing you to create a gap between you and that shotgun blast, giving you the ability to either land a follow-up shuriken to freeze your enemy or enough time for you to deal enough damage to secure the kill. When in doubt, shuriken your way out. All right, you, you guys gotta give me props on that one. That was, pretty, that was pretty catchy there. Have you ever had an enemy run away and try to hide when they're one shot or absolute? I'm sure we all have. Rather than chase your enemy, which puts you at risk, Use the map geometry to your advantage. Remember that your shurikens can either deal 91 or 61 damage depending on where you land your shuriken. As you see in the footage in the background, see how I kill my enemy while they are standing behind a wall? This is one of the best ways to secure a kill without overexposing yourself. 
Lastly, as a hunter, you love to fight from the air, and what better way to take advantage of your enemy but simply putting them at two disadvantages. If you've been subscribed for a while, a comment you've heard me say in the past is, players have a hard time looking up to attack, especially when you're right above them. But if you add a shuriken to that equation, then your enemy is not only confused on your location, now they're gonna be slowed by your ability, allowing you to easily deal damage to them and secure the kill. The new stasis grenades are some of the most interesting and unique abilities new to Destiny. I will be breaking down each grenade along with some of the best tips you can use with them. Starting off this list, we have the Glacier Grenade. This grenade creates a wall out of stasis, which can be used in multiple ways, some offensive and some defensive. Something to keep in mind with these grenades is if you strike your enemy, you can freeze them, which allows you to quickly shatter your enemy by breaking your stasis crystals. Another thing is if your enemy wants to use your stasis wall as cover from you by dealing damage to these crystals, you can cause what I like to call shatter damage. Destroying these crystals will cause them to deal splash damage. Yet another thing to keep in mind is if you see an enemy stasis wall, refrain from destroying them if you or an ally are near them because they can cause damage to yourself or an ally that is nearby. Again, as you can see on screen, when I shock on these crystals, I can cause damage to myself or a teammate. With glacier grenades, there are plenty of useful ways to use them. For starters, they are great for sealing off doorways. If you are getting chased by an enemy and you need to escape, you can use your grenade to seal a doorway, which will give you time to escape and regroup with your teammates or heal and get back into the fight. Another useful way of using these grenades is to take unpredictable angles. Throwing them onto a wall and using them as a platform can throw your enemy off since they won't be expecting you from that position. Moving on, we have the Dusk Field Grenade. This grenade shatters on impact, creating a field that slows targets and freezes them over time if they do not exit the field. As you can see in the footage, any enemy caught in this field will be slowed down, thus making their escape much harder and if they're in the field too long, they will be frozen, allowing you to easily clean them up. Keep in mind that this grenade can freeze multiple enemies caught in the field. Personally, I find these grenades to be more of a zoning style and great for either capping points such as control points or the final zone in a survival match, but they are not limited to those scenarios. These grenades are great for keeping your enemies off power ammo in those situations where securing power can flip around. Lastly, you can use these grenades as a way to keep your enemies from collapsing on you. In those low health situations, by going behind cover, you can now safely throw a grenade on yourself, allowing to keep your enemy from engaging you, thus allowing your recovery to kick in and putting you back on an even playing field. Moving on into our final grenade and one of my favorites, we have the Cold Snap Grenade, which freezes enemies on impact and sends another seeker to find and freeze targets. This is probably one of the most lethal grenades we currently have in the game. With this grenade, you can throw it at an enemy, which causes them to freeze on impact. If there are any nearby enemies, it will make a stasis line to your next enemy, which will cause them to freeze as well. In a PvP environment, if played properly, you can easily freeze multiple enemies. This grenade has so much going for it, from punishing your enemies for standing too close to each other to having it as a last ditch effort to survive. One of the best ways to use this grenade is to freeze your enemies who decide to play too close to cover. As you can see in the footage, see how my enemy is using the corner of that box as cover. If I strategically place my grenade at that location, this will cause my enemy to freeze and I can easily clean them up. Something that this grenade provides the hunters is a way to save yourself from being collapsed on. Take this scenario for instance. See how my enemy is face to face with me. I can easily throw a cold snap grenade on the ground which will cause them to freeze and just like what all great hunters do, I can jump and finish my frozen target for an easy kill. I like to see this as a get out of jail free card. When it comes to the super ability, I think it's easier to use once you understand how it works. First, let's break down the ability. The super ability is called Silence and Squall. When activated, you throw two stasis commas, one after the other. The first one you throw is known as Silence, which creates a flash freeze blast that freezes and damages targets. The second thrown is Squall, which causes a stasis storm and slows and damages targets caught inside. For starters, let's talk about Silence. This part of your super will freeze your enemy and cause damage, but if you choose not to hit your target with Squall, which is the second part of your super, then your enemy can break free with only being dealt damage. If you split your super and you hit another group of enemies with squall only, this will cause them to be caught inside a stasis storm 
and they will die from damage if they don't exit the storm. Essentially, if you want to deal maximum damage, it's better to try to get both Silence and Squall in a close radius of each other, so the Stasis Storm kills the frozen targets. One way to maximize your damage output is to split your super and coordinate with your teammates. This can allow you to split your super into two separate attacks at once. You can have your teammates defeat the targets that are frozen by Silence, while using Squall to engage another group of enemies. I believe that the super takes time to master, but I will leave you with this piece of advice. Watch your head clearance. If you activate your super ability in a space that has low clearance, you might catch yourself wasting your super by using it against a ceiling rather than an enemy. Something newly added to the subclasses in Beyond Light are aspects, which are abilities that grow your build and provide fragment slots. Both aspects and fragments have not fully been released by Bungie, but once they do, I will be making a separate guide on which perks you should be keeping an eye on to optimize your subclass. So if you're interested in those videos, don't forget to click the bell notification to be notified of all my new videos I post. At the time of making this video, only one aspect is available for the Hunter class, which is the Shatter Dive Stasis aspect, which reads, activate while mid-air to quickly descend and shatter nearby targets on impact. It's pretty simple on how to activate this ability. As you can see on screen, while mid-air, I activate my air move, which sends me in a downward motion. This ability kind of reminds me of the Titan Ballistic Slam. But staying on topic, this ability is intended to be used as a way to shatter your enemies when they are frozen. As you can see on screen, when your enemy is frozen, by destroying your stasis crystals, this will cause your enemy to die. Shatter Dive is a way to destroy multiple enemies who have been frozen with stasis. The Shatter Dive deals about 50 AoE damage to any nearby enemies within its radius. So I don't recommend you try the Shatter Dive on an unfrozen enemy unless they are low health. But personally, I'm a big fan of this ability. For starters, there's been numerous times where I catch myself jumping in the air only to be sniped by a sniper. But with the Shatter Dive, you can now thrust yourself down to the ground to avoid situations like that. Another way to use this ability is to thrust your way down behind cover. If you're engaging an enemy in the air and you're fighting mid gunfight in the air, maybe using a hand cannon, if you feel like that engagement is lost, you can Shatter Dive to the ground behind cover. But what I really find to be the bread and butter of the Shatter Dive is the ability to activate it without having to fully execute a full jump. If you jump, you can Shatter Dive regardless of how high you are in the air. I usually try to pair the Shatter Dive in a Wombo Combo style method, where I lead with my grenade to freeze my targets and capitalize with the Shatter Dive. Currently, I have the Whisper of Durance Fragment and the Whisper of Fissure Fragment. The reason I picked these fragments before the others is due to their ability to assist in my neutral game. For Whisper of Durance, it reads, slow from your abilities last longer. For those abilities that linger, their duration is also increased. One of the main reasons I chose this fragment was to assist in those up close and personal engagements in which I get rushed by an enemy by using my shuriken, its slow effects last longer which ultimately give me the upper hand. For the Whisper of Fissure, it reads, Increase the damage and size of the burst of stasis when you destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target. The reason I went with this fragment was to assist in those engagements in which I engage multiple enemies. Being able to use my grenade and freeze multiple enemies, I wanted to improve the size and damage of breaking those stasis crystals. Overall, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to stasis. I'm sure as the season progresses and more fragments and aspects are released, you're going to see some nutty builds, which I promise you can find on his channel. For my Hunter mains looking to take their stasis gameplay to another level, I would highly recommend you check out my advanced Hunter movement video, in which I show tips and tricks on how to improve with your movement. You can find that video on screen. For those trying to level up as quickly as possible, you can get high armor while in the competitive playlist by winning. If you're looking for a guide how to improve in comp, you can find that on screen as well. With that, if you haven't followed me on Twitch, head over there right now and jump into chat and let's talk about some PvP related stuff. Don't forget to share this video, like, subscribe, and like always, you guys have a good day and I'll see you in the next video.